Okay, everyone, we're going to get started. Aloha, everyone. Uh, welcome back. If you weren't uh, on during the live convocation, I did want to welcome us all back to uh, 2021. We're all, I think, a little bit optimistic of what 21 can bring for us, given that uh, 2020 had some pretty big challenges, but we still have some, some challenges ahead. I did want to start the year uh, with, with one of our periodic updates. Um, as I wanna continue keeping the, the campus engaged as we hear of any updates or face any challenges, I just like to put them up front. Um, I don't have a great deal of updates that otherwise you, you didn't hear late in December, um, but, um, but, but I do wanna share and again, just get us up to speed and provide a little bit of updates that are not quite solid, uh, but you know, things that may probably come up uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future. And so with that, I want to initiate where we more or less left off back in December. Now, for some of you, this is a repeated uh, uh, discussion because I've shared this with some other groups. Uh, but last year, we left off with our planning for fiscal year 22 and beyond, um, where the uh, office of Erica LaCroix has shared some uh, memos with some progress on where we could probably go. And the emphasis of it all is multifaceted. One of them is really alignment and serving the state, but the other one is trying to address some of the potential budgetary shortfalls that we're likely to experience. And so just to refresh our memories, um, the governor laid out a budget that in effect um, cut UH's general fund budget by $78 million. Um, of that $78 million, $23 million is the community college's contribution. And so how we address that $23 million is going to come from many different ways. It could be you know, some efficiencies, it could be shifting some things around. But at the end of the day, uh, $23 million is a lot of money, especially recognizing that we almost exclusively use general fund dollars for salaries. And so there have been a lot of conversations on where we can, we can identify some possible cost savings. And so, of course, you know, we have seen some uh, retirements and departures from the college and then the university. And so that definitely helps address some of the budgetary shortfalls, but it may not be in the right places so that, you know, it, it's, not a, it's not a gain all, all the way around. Um, there's also been some conversations about maybe uh, retirement incentives and other opportunities where again, we may find another wave of, 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 um, of savings to help address the, the, the budgetary needs. But at the same time, um, we've identified some areas of possible opportunity and this may or may not result in, in financial uh, savings, but certainly a way of um, aligning more of our services uh, to help support our students and then ourselves as well. Um, and so a lot of that is captured in those memos um, in the last reminder that you guys got for an upcoming meeting with Vice President LaCroix, uh, we've linked the website where you could find all of this and you may be part of some conversations that are already happening. And so just to say, you know, I try to paint a pretty picture all the time or whenever possible, uh, but we do have a lot of eyes on the university whether it be, you know, from legislators and the Board of Regents, as well as, you know, just about anyone else, how can we f address our budgetary shortfalls given, you know, our circumstances? Um, and, you know, the perception that some state agencies are heavy doesn't help. <laughs> um, and so again, a lot of focus on state agencies and, you know, maybe misuse of state dollars. And so because of that, we have to, um, in effect, not be reactive, but we have to respond to that. And we have to address, again, that $23 million hit for the community colleges. That being said, I do want to uh, update based on recent conversations and recent outcomes as a result of, I want to say, in part, the presidential elections, 
as well as the Council on Revenues here in Hawaii. Um, and so a couple of areas that you should have in mind because it's all part of the equation, right? And so for starters, um, the, the, the federal government has been announcing new waves of stimulus. In fact, um, incoming President Biden uh, or president-elect rather, uh, just came off a press conference where he discussed this gigantic relief package. Now, how, and how it will happen and when it will happen and all of that is still to materialize, but we gotta recognize that any of that relief can help mitigate some of the budgetary challenges. And so it could help us maybe uh, alleviate a little bit the urgency of everything that we're doing. Uh, needless to say, I am not in a decision-making capacity for any of that, uh, but if any of that materializes, it could be really, really uh, helpful. And so to that end, two major numbers that you should uh, famil well, not familiarize yourself with, but just be aware of. Um, the federal government has proposed a new wave of CARES funding for, for uh, higher ed institutions where Leeward is projected to receive about $4.8 million. Uh, that was revised from yesterday where I thought I was gonna get 5.6, but 4.8 million is still better than nothing. Um, and like we received the first three tranches of CARES funding, there are stipulations that trip us up on how we could spend the money all the time. And so almost any and every proposal that we receive or that we consider, it, it's denied, denied, denied. So we just have to be very creative on how to use the funding. Uh, that being said, of that $4.8 million, we were initially projecting that at least half of that had to go directly to students, like the first tranche from CARES. Uh, but uh, more recent updates suggest that only about a million dollars has to go directly to students. Uh, and so we're probably going to work with the remaining dollars to direct some more money uh, to directly support our students through direct student stimulus. And so we will receive some dollars that should hopefully help us, you know, cope through the, the remainder of the pandemic. And so we won't have to, you know, carry on the expenses of PPE and additional expenses that are directly related to COVID. Uh, so that, that's definitely helpful. At the same time, the states are receiving some stimulus uh, some of which resulted in postponing the state employee furloughs um, uh, for, for at least a period of time. And so that's important. That's one of the changes that happened around the corner of shifting from 2020 to 2021. Um, and so th there have been some shifts and changes there. The other thing that you should keep in mind is that last year, the Council on Revenues here in Hawaii had predicted that we would be at about 11% down in, in revenues for the state, not the colleges or the university, but the state. Based on that projection, the governor made all of the shifts necessary to lay out a budget for the state agencies. Well, um, I, wow, I think it was last week. I can't remember anymore. I think last week, the Council on Revenues met again uh, with more updated information and they redrafted that forecast where instead of 11% down, they projected that we would be closer to 7% down on the collections. And so we're talking about statewide budget, so that's a lot of money. Um, I don't know to what extent the governor and the ledge are gonna consider that new revi not, uh, revised uh, forecast, uh, but I'm optimistic that the more, um, that the better forecast should result in better numbers for the university. Um, and so I wanted to share that with you because it's, it's out there and it's just a matter of other people reacting and responding to it and hopefully getting us um, you know, some additional funding so that we could help address our budgetary shortfalls. And so that's where we are budget wise, right? So not much has changed from December to now for Leeward but we are hearing that there is going to be additional money here and there. Um, on a side note, the university can't necessarily take into consideration one-time dollars to address or offset long-term budgetary constraints, right? And so we're still living the challenges of the, of the pandemic and we'll be able to fill in some gaps. But at the end of the day, our planning efforts really have to result in 
an overall tightening of our budgets. So we're going to continue being very vigilant on, on our spending and our operations. Um, and so you'll hear a lot more of this coming from our regions that are putting a lot of pressure on the university uh, to, to help address our, our budgetary shortfalls. Um, okay, so I'll pause there and transition to um, something that has resulted in quite a bit of questions uh, recently. Um, and that is COVID vaccinations. As you're aware, at the very end of the calendar year, we served as the vaccination site for first responders. And so I'm, I'm very glad that we do that type of service to our community. Um, and it also may provide an opportunity for us to, uh, you know, get our college community vaccinated. And so uh, you should have received an email from President Lasner earlier today, I think. I could be confused, but in any event, I'm gonna be pushing it out uh, from me to the Leeward community uh, because what we need to do is an analysis or an assessment rather of how many of us want to get the vaccine so that we can then share that with the Department of Health so that we could prepare a little bit better or they can prepare a little bit better for the sake of, of our vaccinations. Um, if you've been following the media and the Department of Health, uh, they have placed educators as, yeah, I forgot, I think, I think it's 1B, which is the next group to get the vaccination. So we're on that list. Um, the extent to which they'll go deep and go through everyone that's listed in 1B is really going to be very dependent on the vaccines that are shipped to Hawaii. Um, but the questions that I'm getting is how do I sign up, when, and will it be on campus? So I don't have control of any of these variables, but what I can tell you is that Leeward is committed as a site as long as it doesn't overly interrupt our operations. And so the test trial happened back in December uh, where the first responders were the ones being vaccinated. Um, you know, the, the traffic management was amazing. There wasn't really much, to be honest. It was all based on registration, so it didn't create the type of traffic that the, um, that the mass testing did or that the food drive did. Um, and so we're still committed to working with the Department of, of, of Health in, in um, making this happen, and hopefully we can all get that vaccine through there. Um, and be on the very earlier stages of that 1B list. And so as soon as those, those uh, dates and, um, and the lists and how to register and all of that materializes, I will be sharing that with you. Uh, we don't know how many of us are gonna be willing to go through there, but we do know that students are then the next group. Um, and so again, it's just a matter of how many vaccines we get, on, we get in Hawaii. Um, and, and start, you know, vaccinating folks. And so that's a little bit of an update there. I do want to thank uh, Will Akama and his team for, for really being upfront and helping us out during this process um, of, of, of getting uh, the Department of Health here and, 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 and working with the vaccination efforts. Um, and then, okay, so that's on the vaccine. I'm going to jump very quickly to two things that I think are related, and one of them I don't know if everyone's aware of, um, even though I, do, I have mentioned it a couple of times. Um, we did just open our Welcome Center. Um, and so this is an effort that has been going for quite some time, but because of COVID, we've delayed and yada, yada. Uh, but, but it was one of those things that I really felt was necessary because, um, you know, it, it is a central point for us to support our students, especially during these times. And so even though we don't have the full welcome center up and running because of COVID, um, we do have a mini welcome center and it's been an amazing experience. I think that if and when you guys are around, it'd be nice to just take a look at what's happening there. I think that that's incredible. And I tie that to our enrollment. Um, I, I do wanna provide an update that Leeward is one of the campuses that's a little ahead uh, compared to last year in enrollment. And so in terms of headcount, we're about 1% up uh, in enrollment from last year. So that's a big win for us. So thanks everyone for your support. I know that, boy, did we put ourselves out there. I mean, we were in social media, we held events, we had 
all of these strategies. I know many of you got on the phones. We all worked to get to this enrollment and I'm really happy about the outcomes. I say that because it's really difficult to uh, respond or react to a question from a legislators about whether we need to have so many campuses or so many administrators, chancellors, um, it's, really, it's really even more difficult if I have to defend that during an enrollment decline. And so it's good to maintain or increase a little bit. We are down on the credit count, so an SSH, uh, but that's you know a, a result of the circumstances. Students are not registering for as many classes and there are just some other classes that, that you know, are a little bit challenging to take online. So we've seen a decline there. But, you know, many of us have been a little bit creative during these times. And so you probably have noticed through social media that, you know, we're lending out ukuleles and keyboards for our music classes. And, you know, it's, it's looking for those barriers that are preventing our students from registering and just breaking through them and providing the resources for students to register. Um, and so I think that as we continue to navigate this, and continue being creative, we'll, we're gonna overcome everything and we'll weather it, uh, but it'll be choppy along the way. So, but I, I did wanna provide that, that quick update. And then just before I open it up to questions or you know, conversation, um, some, some quick updates. We're having an AQIP uh, site visit for our education program and that's happening January 19th through the 22nd. That's a programmatic accreditation effort, you guys. So that's really important for us. Um, it's gonna happen virtually. Um, I personally think that we're prepared for it. We'll provide updates along the way, but that's a real big win for us. It's always good to have these programmatic accreditations and it's an indicator of excellence. Yeah, and so that, that, that's where we wanna be. Um, you're probably aware that we typically do celebrate CTE month in February. And that's when we typically have buses here with hundreds of students. Well, kind of difficult now. Um, and so we're gonna be doing something a little bit creatively through uh, virtually more or less envision how we did some creative effort during, for, for our discovery fair. So, you know, just trying to manage through the pandemic. Um, one of the things that I, I, I did wanna update everyone because we've been on this lull of the pandemic, hopefully as things begin to improve, you'll see a little bit more live happening on campus. Uh, one of the shifts that's happening, and again, this is following all of our, you know, um, COVID informed practices and CDC expectations, the Pearl will open on a, on a restricted, in a restricted capacity. Uh, this is primarily to expose our students to, you know, that, that important practice in, in in, in, in their culinary experience. And so I don't have all of the details on how it's gonna happen, but I'm confident that soon enough we'll begin getting some information because the Pearl will open only to students and employees, right? Because we're still closed to the, to the public. Um, and so I wanted to provide that, I guess, just a little glimpse of, of, of hope and progress that we're seeing here and there. Um, and so I did wanna reflect on um, the, the Pauhana that, that, that was recently held. I don't know if my first year I missed it or if we had one, but I can tell you that I logged into our Pauhana this year, this last year, and I was really impressed by the work of our faculty and our students. I, you know, it, it's very rare that you'll find my kids, my wife and I all sharing the very same screen. Uh, but we were all just stuck watching what our students were doing, uh, what our faculty have done. And so I am just really impressed and inspired by what everyone has been doing. So a big kudos to everyone. I got to tell you, I saw, you know, our faculty were promoting their courses while the experiences were happening. So that's just, it's, it's just amazing. And so with that, I did hear recently that our digital media program is planning to showcase student projects. I, you know, send me the invite, even if I can't go, I try to see what we're doing because I'm just really impressed all the time. And there's nothing better 
uh, for marketing what we do than to just know what's happening so that we could display and show and tell. So with that, I'm going to pause and thank everyone again for absolutely everything that you guys have been doing because amidst the pandemic, we've done really well for ourselves. We're still doing, you know, living our mission. And so, I, again, I want to thank everyone and I'll open it up to the chat and questions. If you have any additional ones, I'm going to try to have answers or at least uh, promise that I'll have an answer at some point. Uh, but I'll pause here. <clears throat> hey, uh, Carlos. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is this is Ron. I just wanted to to just make the announcement that I I had sent out an email to uh, the faculty and staff about the uh, Perkins opportunity for 2021 and 2022. So. Um, you know, if you have any questions about those, uh, the deadlines and the application form, just let me know. Uh, I, I do want to uh, announce that uh, there's, there's a short application that's going to be due uh, in about three weeks on, on February 8th. So this is new uh, as far as the timeline is concerned, but uh, take a look at the information that I sent and uh, uh, if there's any questions, uh, let me know. Okay, thanks a lot, everybody. Anyone else? I know it's the beginning of the year and everyone's, you know, working to continue getting our students through. So thank you for that and, and for, for instruction and all of the services that we provide. So again, this was just a quick update. We don't have anything earth shattering, I think, uh, at this point, but um, I did want to plug in that next week we do have Vice President LaCroix uh, joining us for one of our campus wide meetings. Um, and the, the, well, the reminder or invitation that I sent out has a link for questions. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would share that with Vice President LaCroix the day before uh, the meeting. Um, and we could have other engaging conversations during that day, but just for preparation purposes. Um, and so again, we're here, we'll continue providing these updates. I know that maybe we'll get tired of them. You'll get tired of hearing me, but I'd rather have you guys updated than then out in the dark. Um, so again, any questions or anything like that? Otherwise, I do want to respect everyone's time um, and that everyone's working tirelessly. Just a, a quick question, uh, Carlos. Has anybody, um, this is way premature, but has anybody given any thought to how we're going to uh, react once the uh, COVID thing has passed us? And let's assume that all of the faculty and all the students have been uh, vaccinated and that all goes well and we're done. Um, are we planning any big gala, welcome back to life, uh, huge uh, campus-wide, uh, community-wide uh, events? Again, I know that's early, but it would also give people a little bit of hope uh, to plan on, on something. I know when I go on vacation, planning the vacation, is almost as much fun as doing it. So I'm just wondering if anybody's given any thought to, oh my God, let's do this and let's get fireworks and let's do whatever uh, for when this is all uh, over um, and uh, celebrate much as they uh, did in Europe after the Black Plague. Just a question. <laughs> I, I appreciate that comment, Bob. Uh, you know, I, I will say back in March when I thought that this uh, virus was going to last, you know, two to three weeks, <laughs> um, I, I started toying with the idea of me having, having someone make some gigantic COVID-shaped pinatas and having us come back and just beat it. I think it's still a good idea, but that was back in March and then April came, May came, December. Um, and so I think that absolutely, I would love to do something that just gets us back and going. Um, and so I guess I'll, I'll, I'll hold my breath to a little bit, but once we see the light at the end of the tunnel a little bit brighter, I think that we could organize something. I can't spend state money on it, but I'm sure that we could be creative in a way in which we could all celebrate and give our students that, that you know, jolt of joy. <laughs> so
So because because commencement 21 is still part of spring, that's not, you know, not not we're not going to have the ceremony that we typically have. Um, but we, we haven't dismissed all possible ideas. Um, I don't remember, honestly, the last discussion that I had with Lexer, uh, but but let, I'll, I'll I'll provide an update. Oh, wait. Oh, I think that I just said what Lexer put on the chat box. Um, in any event, I think that we got to find a way of doing it. We're just, I, I, I'm hesitant to announce something ahead of time and then have to cancel. Um, and, and I think that all of the UH campuses are trying to align themselves too, so that we all, you know, there isn't the one that's doing something and then the others that aren't. Um, but yeah, I think that we have to celebrate our students big. We got to welcome ourselves back. We got to, we got to jumpstart Aloha, right? I feel like I haven't had a hug in a really long time. Um, and so we got to find a way of bringing that back together. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue engaging in that topic for sure. Yeah, virtual ceremonies is what I've been hearing too. Anyone else? All right, well with that, thank you guys. Again, we record these, we'll put bl blast it out with the next invite. And um, I, again, I can't remember when Erica's meeting is gonna be, but I'm sure we'll send another reminder out uh, soon enough. So thanks everyone. Appreciate everything that you're doing and let's just keep that spirit up because our students feel it. So thanks everyone.